Yeah, it smells like fish and her drawer smell of fish. You're a dory. You're a dory. Nice. Hello. Hi. What are you doing? Having a drink. Having a fine ales yarl. Mm. Session blonde. And I'm going to be cooking stuffed peppers with polenta. I know, I know, a lot of people are probably thinking that peppers are grown in the hot part of Italy and polenta's from the north. They all don't care. Because it was supposed to be bloody burgers. Bloody burgers? We can eat them raw. Yeah. Um, I was going to be having a barbecue and again the weather's conspired against this. Ooh, cheeky. So, what you'll need is, for two people, you will need two peppers, four burgers, or equivalent in mincemeat. I've got some salami here, definitely Italian, not German at all. I.e. I'm using up any old shit that was in the fridge. Two rashers of maple cured uh, streaky bacon. Uh, any streaky baker is fine, and two tomatoes cut into fours, as you can see they're starting to turn. I've got some uh, Heinz Tommy K, I've got some head sauce, so any spicy chilli sauce will do, and some minced garlic, I've got polenta, and in here I have got some, I think it's beef stock, but chicken stock, <coughs> or the likes, or vegetable stock will do. And since I've got it, some thyme, so I'm going to... A couple of good pinches of dried thyme in the bowl. Put my burgers in there, they're going to get smooshed up anyway. Put this to one side. Chop up the salami. Okay, I'm going to be stuffing them with the mince anyway. My oven is preheated to 200 Celsius. A good glug of het sauce. These are burgers already mixed, so I'm going to assume that the seasoning and the salt will be fine. But I like a bit more pepper. You can always add more. And a good splooge, say about a tablespoon of Pines Tommy K. So we're going to give that a good mix up and then I'll come back and show you the next stage. Oh, good. Oh. Once you've mixed that, Put it to one side. My board, I've given the board a clean. The next stage you need to do is to seed your peppers. So you need to split them in half. So peppers normally come in three sections. You will get the odd one that's in four. They're handier, but unfortunately they're not like this. So you want to split the pepper through the stock. So go like that. Do the same with the other one. Right. And then you'll need a small knife. And you want to cut out all of this but you need to leave this green stock in so carefully cut away the membrane, cut away the seeds like that. Scoop it all out. If you really want you can get a spoon and scoop it out or you could use the back of your back of your knife. But it's as simple as that. So I'll do I'll do one more to show you again. I'll do this one. So using the control you won't cut yourself unless your knife is a razor but you should never be doing that but 
knife in, be in between your knuckle and your fingers, not in your hand like that. Control it like that, and you want to just control the knife using easy movements and just pull it through the seeds like that. And you want to get make sure you've got all these seeds out and the membrane out. These are bell peppers, so there's not going to be any heat in them. If that was a chili pepper, all the heat is in this white membrane. So get them deseeded and we'll come back. I'll probably be pouring another beer by then. There it goes. Right, so once you've taken the seeds out, it's important to always keep it hydrated in the kitchen. This time it's with an Edinburgh Gold Pale Ale from Stuart Brewing. Now, never do this on a school night, but it's okay, tonight's Monday and I'm not working at the moment, so it's technically not a school night. Ooh. And you left school a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not so taken on that one. It's not bad, but I wouldn't buy it again. I didn't buy it, but never mind. Right, so if you want, you can trim off the, the stalks a little bit, so I'm going to do that. Just. Can I taste it? Like the stalk, like the beer. You could do it when we're not filming, couldn't you? <laughs> do it now. Mm. Right. Oh, I see what you mean. It's a bit peely wally. Yes. So, as you can see, they're not going to sit flat like that. So, you can get bits of tin foil and scrunch it in so you can sit them on. But that's not important right now. So, the first thing you need to do is salt and pepper into your peppers. If you want to add just a little bit more flavour, you could uh, put a bit of olive oil or some something like that. I'm not going to bother because there's enough fat in there, but if, if it wasn't fatty meat you were using, you'd maybe enhance it with a little bit of olive oil or something like that. So, put this to one side again. I'm going to grab my meat. I'm also going to get a hold of this. I just stuff it into the pepper. It's as simple as that. As much in as you can. Get it in all the nooks and crannies. So again, you don't need to watch this. So you can come back once I've done that. So you've been doing anything interesting during lockdown? Learned any new skills? Yeah, well, seeing as I'm not working, um, I've been actually I've been learning Italian, believe it or not. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how do you say hello? My name's Robert in Italian. Um, hello, my name is Robert. I think. Right. Anyway. So once you've got your pepper stuffed, as you can see, they ain't sitting flat. So you get a bit of aluminium foil. And for those of you on the in North America, it is pronounced aluminium, not aluminum. It is spelled aluminium. Okay, so you need to cut it in little squares and literally just make a little thing that you can kind of sit it on so that it shouldn't all over there we go that worked so I'll do that with all four and we'll come back again well go on say something else in Italian then something else in Italian oh, Jesus. it's quite racist is it yes I mean really mildly racist but it's funny you can only you can get away with racism when it's European shouldn't be the case like Irish jokes for example reminds me of the story of Murphy walks into the barn and sees Paddy standing there going like this. In front of a Massey Ferguson. Murphy says to Paddy, he goes, Paddy, what in God's earth are you doing? Paddy says to Murphy, well, 
Mary and I have been having a bit of relationship trouble, so I went to a marriage counsellor and he's told me to do something sexy to attract her. <laughs> oh, God. Right, okay, once you've stuffed your peppers, a bit more pepper on top of your peppers. As you can see, they're all pretty stable. So, I'm going to put two tomatoes on top of each one, or two slices rather. And even though I'm going to put bacon on, tomatoes always need a little bit of salt. And literally just, yeah, we'll go this way. Rash of bacon over the top like that. Put a bit more pepper. And if you want a very thin drizzling of olive oil. them in the middle shelf of an oven I reckon about 30 minutes you want the core of that to be cooked it's minced meat um, I really love my meat rare I could eat a raw steak no problem at all but when you get mince when you buy mince or ground beef as Americans would call it the problem with that is E. coli only lives on the surface of meat, so if this was a steak and there was E. coli on it, as soon as you sear it on either side and round the edge, you're killing that bacterium and you won't get E. coli. But if you've got mince or ground beef with E. coli through it, as soon as you eat even a burger that's not been cooked above 82 Celsius, you are at risk of getting food poisoning. Uh, that's why it's not really customary in in this side of the pond to eat burgers underdone. They are a lot nicer, I'm not going to lie. <coughs> but it is, it is a bit of a risk. So you need to make sure that the centre of this is at least 82 Celsius. If you've got a probe, uh, you want to check it's 82. If not, I'll show you once they're done. But I reckon about 30 to 35 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to tidy up and then get on with the polenta. So I'll come back once I'm ready to do the polenta. Now it's time to make the polenta. Right. So, we've got stock. The general rule with polenta is four to one so if you've got a cup of polenta you want four cups of liquid yeah so I'm gonna use half a cup of polenta for two of us it's quite a bit now I was just gonna dice this onion but I was gonna show you something so when onions and garlic start sprouting you'll, you'll notice that they get a bit soft in the center here it's important that you actually cut this out Why? Uh, because it's not really that digestible. More so with the garlic, when you get the wee green shoot coming through the garlic, you should always uh, get rid of that. So I'm just gonna, so in a medium hot pan, so very medium, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. It's more for flavor, but it's to stop the butter burning. So you need quite a bit of butter for this. So that's about 25 grams of butter, which is about an ounce. So melt that in there gently. Uh, and because I want to put onion in it, I'm gonna dice this onion, so. Fairly roughly, doesn't have to be pretty.
I would put two cloves of garlic in there. So I'm putting the equivalent of garlic puree because we haven't been able to get garlic lately. It's a pity because garlic's very good for you. So, like I say, low to medium heat. You might want to turn it up, but at the start you want to just sweat your onions. So the important thing you need to do when you're sweating any vegetable is to add a little salt. So I'm going to sweat this for five minutes until these are opaque and the butter's melted. So come back in about five minutes. Right. So once your onions and garlic are cooked and opaque, like as you can see, still being cooked gently, then you want to add the stock. So it's not like a, a risotto or anything like that where you, you add the, the grain and get it coated in fat. You want to add the stock. a good stir, bring it to the boil and grab a hold of your polenta. So it's just on a gentle simmer as you can see and you want to just, it's a bit like making a semolina. Okay, or porridge. I just want to add this in little stages. So it thickens. Now this is wet polenta we're making, so don't worry if it's if you think it's a bit on the runny side. It's going to thicken up. And also you can evaporate it. So there you go, still a bit runny at this stage, but as you can hear, it's bubbling away and it's getting a bit thicker, so you want to cook this roughly for 20 minutes, it should be ready around about the same time as the uh, peppers, see, it's getting very thick already, you want to keep stirring that. And then you want to stir it occasionally throughout the whole 25 minutes. If it gets a little bit thick, don't worry, just take it off and give it a good beat and put it back on. Don't be tempted to add too much water or stock to it because you're going to add some butter towards the end just to loosen it up. But you want, at this stage, what you should do though, is just check the seasoning. Careful, it's going to be very hot. And it just needs salt. A good bit of salt. Whatever you do, don't be tempted to turn the heat up. In fact, you're better if you turn the heat down. See, it's starting to come away. So I'm going to turn the heat really low and I'm going to put a lid on it and I'm just going to stir it every f five minutes. Give it a good beat. I won't add any liquid to that. So, we'll come back. Hopefully the peppers and the plant is going to be ready around about the same time. We'll see you then. Right. <laughs> oh, glitch in the matrix there. So about five, six, seven minutes before you take it out, you want to put your oven up to full whack. Get some cheese out, like a cheddar or a hard cheese that you're going to grate. Get a skewer and just pop that into the middle of your meat. Then touch it on your lip. And if it's hot, it's cooked. 
Do you want to do that with them all? <laughs> yeah. So, grab your cheese if you want. Get it some. How would you test it in a restaurant? You couldn't do that on your lip with all of them, could you? You'd have a probe. Yeah. Because you've got to get burnt lips. And... But it, it is a really good way of testing because it's flipping hot. So, oven up full, full pack. back in just until the cheese is melted if you want it golden if you want to brown the cheese that's fine leave it in a bit longer anyway back to the polenta so it's been on really low heat a nice consistency so I'm gonna add this parmesan cheese which is not the nicest parmesan but a bit of a fresh. So mix that in. And then the last of the butter. I thought I'd need more, but it's nice and creamy as it is. I'll just pop that in there. You want to beat that until it becomes silky. If you're cooking it right, it shouldn't burn. So we're going to carry on with that. And then about a minute before I take the peppers out of the oven, I'm going to stick the plates in, warm them up and take it out and serve it up. Simple as that. I just farted. A spoonful of polenta. I've got a greased terracotta dish here that I'm going to So another thing you can do with polenta is if you've once you've cooked it, if you grease a, a tray or something like that, pour it into that that vessel. Spread it out and let it set. You can knock it out of that tomorrow and fry it. Got a lovely crispy polenta. Anyway, back to this. Something slightly different and totally unorthodox. It's not really supposed to be Italian, so if there's any Italians watching, please don't get offended. If you get offended, tough shit. Peppers with polenta. Mm. Happy crappy cooking. <laughs>